uh, this is snow shed, snow, or you know, part of Killington Mountain. This is a, a small part, small, uh, what is this, small slope, small slope of the mountain. That's what it actually is. This is a really cool bridge here. And that I think is a snow shed. That's where I can rent some skis. This that I'm coming out of is that Grand Hotel Resort of Killington. And let's see what's on this sign. So, caution: the bridge is for the use of pedestrians, skiers, and snowboarders. Check the conditions and traffic prior to crossing. So yeah, the leggings actually feel great, even in the cold. You know, the cold isn't so bad. Um, it's really fingers and toes. Wow, not joking. So if you really need to keep yourself warm in the cold, you know, get some really warm gloves for your fingers and hands, and warm socks and shoes for your feet and toes, your toes and feet, which is, I have the warm stuff for my toes. My fingers are a little cold, but, um, you know, hopefully I won't be losing any fingers today. I'm pretty sure the people at MGH will gladly amputate my fingers. Not God. <laughs> Oh shit. And let all those uh, dollars collected in their bank accounts rust but from Mass Health. Uh, and there it is. That is the uh, ski chairlift. That is going to be cold. This is going to be a cold day. Not God. So I got to hurry up and get over there and try this out. <laughs> it's going to be interesting because I'm doing this without any real uh, ski instruction. Just getting out there and taking myself. I time to go down and that's about it. Wow. All right. And we got some reggae. Oh God. Uh, so yeah, this is snow shed. Um, try to get everything, but quite honestly, I gotta get up numbers. Usually they're right in the hundreds, but I tried to be a little more real with you. <laughs> How does that feel though? Snug, these feel good. They're heavy, Ooh. but probably yeah, about almost your, 10 pounds. Your maybe. toes touch the front? Yeah, well, not exactly, but I mean... It's close to it. Yeah, it's close enough. Ay, ay. There it is, all right. So yeah, I'm gonna actually do the group lesson to uh, 1245. I'm gonna try to get to the lift. What is, it's that lift, the, the, mm, is it the magic carpet or something? Yeah, that's gonna be as you go out, go towards the road, and it'll be the closest uh, lift to the road. Yeah. There you go. As long as those are feeling good. Uh, can I see the back one real quick? Actually, I forgot to get a number. Uh, wow, these are heavy. Yo, are you gonna be putting uh, snow pants on too? Uh, no, not really. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Because it's just gonna be easier without it. Like. All right, dude. It's gonna be freezing. Yeah, my legs. I mean, my my legs. They don't. They won't be too too cold. Right Thank you, man. Yeah, but my uh, my core. I have enough like a thermal thing on. Cool. Oh, I forgot to put on my coat. Like, All right, ski years, ride it so fun. Yeah, you just need that uh, top on. All right, so it's 29 January 2019. All right, so there you go. Thanks, man. Now you can head on down to the side. Wow. This is like Voltron. Holy shit. All right, so I go like this way. Oh, yeah, God, this is not easy. There's so no running in this stuff. <laughs> One second. Oh, God. Wow. All right. Well, there's no more up on the toes in these ski boots. Wow. So that's interesting. Wow. <laughs> Can I put my shoes right here? Wow, this is tiring. Uh, just walking around weekly getting in the snow. Yeah, I'm not joking. Uh, no, the snow will be really So how do you know what the uh, what size skis to put on? So based on the height? Well you're start you're just starting out, so it's definitely gonna be one thirties for right now. Uh, these are the shortest adult skis we got. It makes it, it's the easiest to be able to maneuver around and everything like that. And uh, any longer, it starts to get more difficult to, 
turn, make turns and everything, because you have more ski that you have to bring around each corner and everything. Oh, the longer it is, it's harder to turn? Yeah. That but makes the, kind of sense, it, I guess. The faster you're going on these short skis, the more they'll start, you'll start to feel every little bump and every little thing, and so that's with the longer skis, that you it'll absorb those little tiny bumps a lot better than, All right. than the shorter skis will. But for right now, you'll be on the bunny slope, these will be good for you. It's all about learning how to maneuver, you'll probably pizza in for a while, get the wedge in there, and then like, you'll get those french fries, the parallel skis after a while, and then soon you'll be on the, on the snowshed slope, so yeah, yeah. All right. These are all set for you, yeah, I believe. Let's see. And then, oh, poles and the helmet. That's right. Yeah, so the poles and the helmet, uh, I can get you poles, or I'll get you a helmet. How about that? And then if you want to grab poles right over there, it's going to be your 5'7". You're probably the blue strap. Blue strap. So, oh, blue strap, blue strap, blue strap, gotcha. Those are these two. Those are these two. Wow, not God. This is cool. The, po the poles are cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man. <laughs> this is craziness. Anyway, so there it is, some poles. Yeah, they actually, um, wow, these are excellent height for me. And the helmet. Hmm. You mind taking a quick picture of me? Sure. All right, one second. Um, let me just cut this right there. Got it? Yeah. Well, there's the bunny slope that I just went down. I went a lot faster than I expected. So this is the magic carpet. This is for the bunny slope, wow. Gotta put the skis on first, put the toes in, then the heels, and push down hard. And then, uh, it's not too difficult. It takes a little bit of balance. Um, but yeah, getting fast and slaloming, not joking, that takes a lot more skill than just getting on the magic carpet. Still haven't fallen yet, so. Uh. So yeah, and actually, um, I'll tell you this, for skiing, uh, keeping all your facial hair makes a big difference. Keeping all your facial hair makes a big difference. My face is a lot warmer than if I were shaving. Not God. For me, this is pretty much the, the Arctic already rotted. Not joking, this is the Arctic for me rotted. <laughs> Although, yeah, this is still just uh, Vermont. So yeah, it's not exactly the Arctic circle. Not trying to confuse you all. But uh, yeah, it's cold. It's a nice day though. I'm putting my hand back in my glove because my hands are warm enough in these gloves. And uh, yeah, it wasn't too, too difficult. It was actually faster, even the bunny slope, not joking, that I really expected. Like going down whatever the intermediate and the uh, advanced. Yeah, I'm not really up for that right now because I wouldn't have enough control. Like I almost lost my balance twice, or actually I definitely lost my balance one time, but I didn't fall. I did a little back and forth, you know, left to right kind of thing or whatever. Like I see all the Olympians and the winter slaloms do kind of thing. Which was fun, but... Now gigabytes of material on that already. So, um, and yeah, it's too cold to, to run back and forth to go get this camera, which I brought with me. But uh, yeah, I had a great time. It was worth it. You know, the, uh, the skiing... In some ways, it was a little bit easier than I expected. Um, specifically, when I went down the first time, the bunny slope, um, I uh, I was going faster than I expected, just kind of by standing on the uh, on the skis. And it really has more to do with the you know decrease in friction because it's snow, um, say as compared to soccer, and then the slope. So uh, you know, it's like uh, controlling that that motion as opposed to generating the motion by running or something um the uh a ski instructor kind of pointed that out to me later on because i did take a group lesson and it was worth it you know i was kind of after i went down the first time by myself i was thinking maybe i should probably try to get a refund for the lesson or skip the lesson but it's actually a no refund policy <laughs> but i'm grateful that it, i took the lesson anyway because um 
since there aren't many people, because it's a Tuesday, um, I got a almost pretty much a private lesson as a group lesson. There was only like maybe two, two to seven of us. I don't know. There was two in the beginning, and then it showed up. It seemed like five other people showed up, but they had like seven or eight instructors. So it was like everybody was kind of working with the instructor one on one. So he taught me some things, some specific things, like you know, showed me specifically how to go on the sideways up uh, up the, the the slope of that the hill or mountain and also some wedging um, which is like angulation of the skis and then turning like a 180 kind of thing he did that I didn't really do too much of that but you know I I didn't really want to go back out there and ski too many times because since I'm more like developed as a soccer player I start to feel you know, the different biomechanics that are required from the different sports on my bodies, on my body rather. And for instance, my knees, you know, just below my patella, I could feel some strain. He was like, yeah, this knee strain. And, I, and we kind of worked it out. Like, you know, he was telling me how to stand, put my shins in, against the boot in the inside to help decrease that, which did help, especially on my kicking, my non-kicking foot, which is my left leg. But less so on my right leg because my stance is, you know, kind of like a, uh, I guess of a goal scorer, <laughs> soccer player, you know, really like, you know, I, I str would strike the ball a lot with my right foot and, uh, you know, I always had it in position to shoot in volley and so my knee kind of naturally tries to, my muscles are a little more toned and kind of stay bent. So, you know, I've noticed that more and more with other things, other sports that I've tried. Uh, whereas it's natural for me in soccer. Anyway, but with this one, it was great. I really enjoyed the skiing. It's making a lot more sense, you know, skiing as a sport. And <clears throat> because of the experience that I've had, but also because of, you know, signing up for that group uh, lesson and getting to talk to the, the instructor for a good almost hour. We just sat and talked since I was, you know, not wanting to risk any injury. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I didn't really have the warmest gloves on. So I, <clears throat> I was definitely concerned about making sure I didn't get any frostbite. Um, and he gave me a little tip. He said with frostbite, um, at least from his experience, and, I, and it sounds like this is probably true, um, academically too, is that uh, he did say that, um, that it, you know, you typically start to feel a little of pain, just small sensation of pain in the, uh, in the thumb. And then the next finger is the index finger that's, you know, oftentimes can feel some pain. And that is uh, up to the, like the second knuckle. Or up to, yeah, the second knuckle. Well, the, what's the knuckles again? Well, it would really be the, what, distal interphalangeal joint. It'd be up to the proximal interphalangeal joint. Um, <clears throat> so, and I was feeling a little bit of tingling in my thumb already um, when we were starting kind of the lesson outside. So I only went down like, one main slope and then a little smaller slope and then we took a break came in and talked anyway the guy that did the lesson his name is chris carter and uh he seems really knowledgeable let's see if i can put his info there there it is that's his card i'll put his info in in the description uh <clears throat> and yeah he yeah he's definitely very knowledgeable <laughs> there's no doubt about it he knows a lot um especially when it comes to skiing <clears throat> and so yeah hopefully you know I'll definitely keep in touch with these people out here. Um, but I'm going to get going. It's only like 2.30. Um, they they kind of close the slopes around 4. Um, they had opened it at 8 in the morning. But I'm going to go because it's supposed to snow some more and it's supposed to get really cold. And I don't want to stick around um, for the, uh, the snow since I definitely have to drive back home. And I don't want to get caught in the snow either. And I had a great day. And, you know, there's other things I wouldn't mind seeing. But, you know, I could really come back maybe during the summer uh, when I could really see more of the facilities, see what else is out there, and <clears throat> maybe even network with more people out here. I will show, you know, a couple more views just of this uh, from the Grand Lodge, um, which is the main, like, uh, lodging area of Killington Resort. So, yeah, it was a great day. This is going to be a long movie, a long film. This is a long vlog. So I'm going to, uh, I'll put all the clips together and, uh, you know, you all, well, this is at the end for you, but you hopefully all enjoyed it. All right.
and you all will continue to enjoy it.
stuck in Vermont. It's the first place, first parking lot that I saw without a lot of snow. I don't want to get snuck. I don't want to get this car stuck in the snow. Then I'd have to go out and push. And I don't want to get into an accident, so I just got to take my time. But I'm tired. But it was a, it was a fun day, a long day of skiing, for me anyway. And I only went, went out a couple of times. Hmm. I'm gonna put some chapstick on my lips. And I got this little thing. Anyway. So, hopefully I get back before, maybe by, well it's four o'clock now. So I probably won't get back to like 10 p.m., 11 p.m., especially with this in these kind of conditions. It was warm in here, <clears throat> and I almost like fell asleep. But then I had to crack the windows because I was. Uh, I just need. I don't know. Anyway. Well, pretty much just one more oxygen. Sometimes I get, uh, it's like I'll be falling asleep and I don't know all the scenarios, but there's times where it's like I, it's like I have to recover my breath, like I'm, I'm having a hard time breathing, or I'm a deep, in a deep sleep and <clears throat> we're getting into a deep sleep and then it's like I can't breathe through my nostrils or something. So sometimes I open the windows um, to uh, let more oxygen in. I might get going. I'll take my time and stop at any stop, rest stop. On the way, I ate some ham too. I had some cashews. I had apples earlier on the way here. I think I have one apple left. I have some oranges. I still have the chicken with lentils. So yeah, I brought a lot of food. So I have a, a lot of food. I just have to get back to my apartment so I can put things up there and then go back to the airport to return the car afterwards. It'd be a fun drive. I wouldn't mind showing you know a lot of it, but there are some other things you know that I already missed. One thing I wouldn't that I wanted to that I wanted to show on the way here when I saw it, but it was after I uh, was already passing it, and so I don't really try to catch it, you know, or worry about those things because those little things, when done haphazardly, can lead to big mistakes that lead to like injury of one's body or my body or other people's bodies and stuff like that so I don't really it's like don't sweat the little stuff sometimes but yeah for me I just uh, make note of it but I could have gotten it on the way back I could have even driven through it but I just uh, I don't really want to take the risk with uh, in this weather because if I get stuck and then I have to well if this time I get the car pushed out or you know I'll just be stuck Call AAA, call Thrifty, it'd be difficult. Anyway, I probably should get chapstick on my lips. Alright, so, anyway, it's 4.11, I should get going. Well, I would say this, though. I'm starting to understand how the top performing surgeons, you know, manage to make the least amount of mistakes, um, especially in the operating room, just from my, you know, altering my approach. Instead of fo focusing on getting everything done, 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 I just focus on, you know, a superior process perfecting my process with whatever it is and when I make a mistake I'm very clear about 
understanding why I made this mistake, how I made the mistake, how I could have alleviated that mistake. And then the next time I'm in that similar situation, you know, I start to integrate thinking, you know, some cognitive processes about, you know, what it takes, what I should do to avert mistakes. And, you know, and, and also knowing my limits in that, that capacity. I was pretty good with some of this on the soccer field, um, but it was very different because in soccer, you know, when you go for a, a, a high risk play, for instance, you know, could end up in a goal. And if it doesn't, you know, it's just, you know, an, an extra run down the field, you know, um, which kind of adds to my cardiovascular fitness on some level, right? But in the surgical room, it's like, if you go for that extra thing at the end, you know, that could completely kill the patient and wreck that entire, you know, glorious procedure that that I or the surgeon would have done. <laughs> yeah. So the risks, the risk is, it's, it, it's almost like inverted in some ways. It's like, you know, if there's something that's high risk, you know, the gain won't usually be as great. So as a surgeon taking that risk, you know, it takes a lot of planning to take that type of risk. Whereas on the soccer field, if you go for something that's high risk, the loss isn't that great if it doesn't work out. So, um, taking that risk, you know, is usually worth it. So, at least that's that's the way I, that's the way I'm kind of thinking about it now. But yeah, surgery, it's a, it's a lot more work. The other thing that's changed is I don't really need surgery to learn about the human, about human bodies anymore. But, so I don't know. I mean, for me, general surgery is more like, do I want to spend that much time in the operating room, cutting and working with residents, or do I really just want to, uh, you know, do something else? For me, it's more like proving, I guess, to myself and everybody else, I guess. But it's kind of just proving that I can do it. It's not really to everybody else. And not even really to myself, to be quite honest. That's the interesting thing. That's more a cliche way of saying it. For me, it's just proving that I can do it, period, because I kind of set out on that, and I think it would be great. Um, maybe it's my mother who needs it, that proof. I think that's probably the truth. It's my mother who really needs that proof. Maybe it's my future wife who needs that proof. <laughs> no, God. Holy shit. Well, we'll see.
fence is red marked.
was a time when I believed that you belonged to me. But now I know your heart is shackled to a So when I was at, um, when I was an intern, a medical intern at, uh, well, Yale New Haven Hospital in Waterbury Hospital, I was working like 80 hours. I was on call. It was one of the nights that I was on call. So it was 80 hours a week. And I was, one night I was on call. So I was at the hospital for like 32 or 36 hours straight. And I was driving home. And it was, you know, a clear day in Waterbury. <coughs> and I was tired. And I was still trying to get home, thinking, well, I'll make it, you know, I'll make it home kind of thing. Because, you know, I usually did. But I didn't realize how tired I really was. And I fell asleep at the wheel. 
and crashed my Nissan Sentra, which I got for $200 from Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Lee, this kid from Hawaii, which sucked. I would have kept that car for the rest of my life. $200 US dollars. Rocked in. And it was totaled. And, you know, I, I didn't really do much damage to myself. I didn't want to go to the hospital. You know, maybe those neurosurgeons try to cut my, or burr, a hole into my, <laughs> into my skull. Uh, who knows? But anyway. Yeah. So that's something I had to adjust to as well. Swirling skies to be with you. I climb inside the skies to be with you. This is I eighty nine. your journey far through Does it seem like I'm looking for you too? Tell 
to a question I guess I don't know which way This is Sativa. It's on Urban Dictionary. She'll sing her song to anyone that's gradually leave her alone, just fall into the ground without a sound. Crooked little smile on her face.
specialize in different models Just fall into the ground without a sound Spending life in dancing to her favorite song well, She's a little girl with nothing wrong And she's all alone A little girl with nothing wrong And she's all It's crazy because I can already feel this car slipping in the snow here and I'm, I'm only going about 23 miles an hour. Attraction. Well, I mean, like maybe it's just the snow, maybe that's expected. I don't really drive in the winter that much, or almost ever. I mean, well, I don't drive in the snow, put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going with 28 miles per hour now. I guess uh, all wheel drive, or four wheel drive would be better, but the only problem with that, wow. Yeah, if I were to go too fast, too much power in that car, then somehow lose traction. It could be an even worse accident.
2.50 um, in the morning and I left Killington around 2.30 in the afternoon uh, yesterday so it took me about 12 hours to get back. The average velocity I was driving on the way back was about uh, 20 miles per hour or actually I guess speed yeah 20 miles per hour. Hmm. Anyway so um, so yeah I was and that was in the snow and all that. My other two phones are at capacity, so I'm just going to finish up on this one. I just got to pack the things out of the car um, and then drive it back to the airport. What I was hoping to do after I take a little sleep, a little nap, and some rest. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in terms of what I ate during that time, so I just had what that half an omelet, potatoes. Um, two apples, two bananas, 
Uh, I had an entire thing of Orantina on the way back, which kind of helped me stay awake. Um, I had what, two waters, a little bit of the Gyro Style apple, sparkling apple juice, and oh, I had two packages of ham. It's probably about three quarter pounds of ham. And that was about it, I think. And I'll write that stuff up in the description um, and put all the uh, financial information for that trip, too. All right. Anyway, I'm going to go to bed, take a little nap, sleep for a little bit. And I wake up, I'll pack out the card, and then drive it back and use this camera for that, the last part. So for like sleep data, so I uh, I took about nine breaks for naps um, on the way back from Killington. The first one was at the farmer's market, which was in Woodstock. Uh, second one, what, two and three, and, mm, second, two and three and four. Uh, the second one was at, on a snowy um, like road some town off of I-89, and then I took about three more on I-89 on the side of the road in the breakdown lane, and then another three more in uh, on I-93 in the breakdown lanes again. And then um, when I got into Boston, actually here on Huntington Avenue, I took a break there too because I was tired. I took a, another nap and slept, and I actually got a little bit of sleep. It was more like power naps or cat naps, but it was worth it and definitely made my drive a lot more safe, so a lot safer. Um, and then in terms of total breaks, on the way up to Killington, I took a break to eat, which was my longest break. That was about an hour or two. I think it was about maybe two hours. And then the nine sleep nap sleeps or sleep naps, sleep breaks. And then I also took, uh, I also stopped on the side of the road several times to uh, to change music and things like that. Pretty much any time I had to do something other than drive, for the most part, I would then uh, take a break. And so the, the music changes, that was probably about, maybe up to 10 times. So on total, that's approximately 20 breaks, so about 20 breaks that I took from the, uh, for the drive. 20 or so, I didn't count them prospectively. I wasn't keeping track of them that way, but... So retrospectively, that's the numbers that I can come up with from my recall. Anyway, I'm going to get up, get out of bed, put some clothes on, and go uh, unpack the car. Put some music on, too. And then return the car.
expensive. The helipad's really expensive, but I think it was definitely worth it. Like, Thanks, babe. Yeah, of course. I just um, I just have one more question. Okay. Yeah. What do you really think about these jeans? I mean, I, I didn't know when I was getting ready this morning if I do it with a longer jacket. Help me help you. So it's time to go.
Drop this cough. <coughs> and be good to. Another great hair day. Right here. I'm gonna murder your bum No war is not over. I'm gonna murder your bum Zaga 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 na 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 it's only just begun. No war, it's not over. I'm gonna murder your bomb of love. It's only just begun. No war, it's not over. I'm gonna murder your bomb of love. Well, anyway, when your mates are coming to town, pass on clown, whatever now. This bad man, your blood, they don't have pass if you step murder. This bad man, come on, not come, pass on, don't run, don't run, don't This bad man, you follow the town, you know, you like water. Pass it, you know, so that's a mere, they were among us. Just by your mother, you can't let them believe that's my belonger. We shot them, that's a lightning, we got them all like thunder. Your man is willing to one of the eggs within a son. You can't chat to me because you're more to see that under. Have you think that the good man back down like you have blown up? See me, big tool, I owe a wonder, and I found that chat of line. Now you're five, it likes a new. Boys and girls want to hear a true story Saturday night was at this real wild party They had the liquor overflow in the cup About five, six strippers trying to work for a fuck And I took one girl outside with me Her name was lying She went to junior high with me and said Why you up in there dance for cash? I guess a whole lot of shame since I seen you last She said, what would you do with the summer's at home? I'll help. 
attack without knowing the enemy's strength is foolish. After being warned, To be the top, you must die. I'll own them. Most of all, because I resort them on the mineral land. We have them mineral and salute them like a general, make them no bad man. The first time to lose the cabinet, we run. Can't go to the first time, we run. We are no material. Kill them in a sequel. We love a team and say, Oh, girl, make me see some light a signal. This one is international. First of all, I'm global. Listen to this next one. This word is so essential. Everybody come out on the air saying, Me, me, run, me, motherfucker. Kill pussy sucker, take a bad look at them, shot bad in some fuck. I mean, who say you not liar? I mean, you ever know you're fire? When you play me, you ever make me a gun mouth? You ain't a big motherfucker, kill pussy sucker, take a bad look at them, shot bad in some fuck. I mean, who say you not liar? I mean, you ever know you're fire? When you play me, you ever make me a gun mouth? I know if you don't hear me, I want to be able to say no, no. Never suck it, pussy, never fuck it, but it, no, no. Never see me spend a body, man, money, no, no. Them a platinum, no borrow from nobody, no, no. Never suck it, pussy, never fuck it, man, no, no. Never see me spend a body, man, no, no. Never give me a body, no, 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 no.
Testing, testing, one, two, three. Big up those who big up me. Flex with those who flex with me. Power with those who power with me. Deal with those who deal with me. Respect those who respect me. Fight with those who fight against me. ABC. I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. I am bad. 